She has more than 15 years of experience in the education tech industry and has worked from governments in Asia to classrooms in Canada. Her work with education partners focuses on the digital transition of teaching and learning. It's a pleasure to welcome Christine Major, Director of Global Solutions at Discovery Education. Christine, welcome on stage. Good afternoon, everybody. Oh, we can do better than that. I know it's the end of the day. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> well, it's lovely to see you here this afternoon. And we must give a very warm welcome to those who are viewing via the live web stream. So can we give a big wave? Lots of waving. Lovely. Well, my name is Christine. Um, I'm here from Discovery Education. Um, and in this session, we're going to be covering a few key items. We'll be thinking about the role of technology in education. We'll be thinking, well, what does it look like today? And what are the opportunities for technology in education? And what could it look like tomorrow? How does that sound? Yeah, good. Give me a thumbs up if you agree. Fantastic. OK, well, uh, I'll be asking a few questions as we go throughout the presentation. So I'm going to start with uh, a fairly easy question. Who's familiar with Discovery? Give me a thumbs up or hands up. You know Discovery? Discovery Channel, Animal Planet. Oh, that was an easy question. Uh, well, Discovery was that founded 30 years ago now. And it was built upon uh, a key or a core value. And that is that media can do so much more than entertain. Uh, through media, we can inspire. We can help people connect with the world around them. And critically, we can educate. And that's the role of Discovery Education. So Discovery Education does a number of things. Uh, we create digital content for schools. We create professional development programs for our partners. We provide community and partnership. Today, we connect with around 3 million educators and around 30 million students worldwide. Uh, hopefully, uh, what we also help them do is make that transition to a digitally enhanced classroom. Uh, and it's not just in the classroom, right? When we think about our own lives today, we think about the impact that technology has had. Um, if I ask you guys now, if you need to get some information. If you need to learn something new, how do you go about that? Who uses a book? A couple of hands, yeah. We use books, right? Who talks to the person next to them or maybe picks up the phone? Who uses the internet? Who, as a first stop, as the go-to, uh, maybe look at a video online? Maybe do some searching around the page, maybe do a bit more uh, research and get some more video clips to help you learn about your topic in more detail. Absolutely. All hands are going up. Well, it's, it's revolution. the internet has rev revolutionized the way that we access information and, of course, the way that we learn. And the same is true for our educators. So if we look at this slide here, you know, educators are telling us the same thing. But what's interesting is the amount of technology or the amount of media that's typically used in the classroom. So how do we help our educators make that transition and really introduce and really harness the power that technology brings? I'm going to ask a question, which is, what can we do with discovery education? Before we watch the video clip, though, I must warn you, as an educator myself, I will be asking questions at the end, okay? So I'm watching you guys at the back very carefully, okay? Okay, let's roll. Oh. Here we go. I can take a field trip around the world even though I've never been on an airplane. I can investigate the mysteries of the human body from the inside out. I can see the world through the eyes of others. I can experience what's happening today and understand what it means for tomorrow. 
I can do experiments and learn to think like a scientist. I can learn biology while I'm learning English. I can solve problems that I couldn't understand before. I can dream. I can engage. I can build. I can achieve. I can learn. 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 So what can we do with technology? What can we do with uh, discovery education and video? What did you see? Who heard the girl and she said, I can do experiments and I can learn to think like a scientist? Absolutely, yeah. So she's blending digital technologies and, and the uh, scientific thinking process together. When we're going into classrooms, particularly in the US, where we've uh, developed some fantastic professional development programs, we're seeing students who are taking videos, they're um, in interrogating the data, they're analyzing, they're evaluating. They're taking one piece of data, comparing it with uh, another set of data, and all of this to go alongside the hands-on investigation in their science classrooms. They're thinking like scientists. And this is really important, because the more that we can process information, the more that we can encourage our students to, to really take a, a, a deeper engagement, if you like, uh, with the thinking process, the more likely that that knowledge and that understanding will stick. Okay? Uh, we want information to go into the long-term memory. Okay? So we need to process, we need to consolidate, we need to be asking the right questions and using the right materials. Because you know what? If it goes into the short-term memory, it's not going to stay. Who has done cramming for exams before? You've done your, yeah, the night before. You've done your exam. What happens to that information the next day? Yeah, it's gone. You've moved on. You're on to the next exam. Well, we don't want that for our students, right? We want the information to go into long-term memory. Um, and we can do that through process uh, of consolidation and asking questions. And you know what? This is a really compelling reason why. Check out this app. So for anybody who's doing that cramming, this is the app for you. It's giving us the answers, but you know what? Do you remember when your educator said, well, it's all about the working out. It's the problem solving. Wait until you see what happens next. It shows you the working out as well. So there's a compelling reason. Um, so we need our students to really be able to understand the underlying mathematical concepts, right? We want them to have a deeper engagement and a deeper understanding. And this is at the core of all of our instructional content design. Uh, this is a, a snippet from one of our uh, math programs. This is the Discovery Education Math Tech Book. Uh, and behind me, you'll see the Pythagoras theory. Who remembers that? A squared plus B. Yeah, hands up, and you're drawing your squares and your triangles and trying to figure out the relationship between them. Well, here it's all done visually for you. So a very abstract mathematical concept that's been explained in a very meaningful um, way uh, and very straightforward. But I'm not being asked to take a formula and apply the formula. What TechBook is asking me to do is to figure out what that formula is. It's giving me this visual. Now I have to figure out the a squared plus b squared piece. OK, so we're having a much deeper uh, problem-solving relationship, if you like. OK, now this is particularly poignant in the UK. Do I have any other Brits in the room? Oh, it's just me. OK. Well, coding in the UK was introduced formally into our curriculum back in 2014. And this was a direct result uh, from pressure in industry. Industry was saying, you know, we need coders. There is a skills shortage in the workplace, so we need students who can code. So right now, we have kids who are five years old, and they're going into school, and they are learning how to code. It's not good enough that kids learn pro what programs can do, but the kids today are learning how to make the programs work for them. My son said he's doing Python today in school. 
probably about now. He's six years old. Um, but here we are, a fantastic introduction to coding and the computational thinking. Uh, we have a nice video here of uh, students and teachers coding and thinking through systematic language and giving very precise instructions. The teacher's making a jam sandwich. Um, all I'm going to say is when it gets a bit messy, there was a lot of debugging that needed to happen. We also have technology in the workplace. Now, it's not that he's just looking cool. He's using augmented reality <laughs> to fix an engine. Using like... Oh, there he is. Release two screws. The application is going to be absolutely incredible. Uh, think about how we get our kids ready to be able to use that kind of technology in the workplace, or well, the first opportunities to bring it right into the classroom. This is a great app from the Museum of London. I don't know if anybody has seen it, but it gives you a win use an augmented reality to give you a window onto the past. If you wanted to know what Carnaby Street was like in the swinging 60s, well, now there's an app for that. Um, thinking about images today and in the past, what did this space look like years ago? Really wonderful opportunities. They're exponential, actually. And it's this background that we need to really consider the question. It's not the why technology for education, it's the how. How do we really support that transition? We've spoken today uh, about partnership, working with schools in partnership to help them achieve goals, the need for very high quality and meaningful instructional content, professional development. Okay, it's not good enough to give our teachers all these wonderful materials, but we've got to support that process along the way. When we think about us in industry, when we're buying in new systems and new software, it goes hand in hand with training for our teams, right? Well, that's what we should, that's what we should expect for our educators as well, to really support them uh, in being successful. And then offering community. Uh, we have a huge community, millions of educators who are able to collaborate, to talk to each other, to say, well, this works. You know what, this doesn't work. And to give the opportunity to reflect. One student we worked with in Maryland, you know, he said, and this is quite profound, students who get to learn with digital content in their classrooms, you know what, they're lucky, but you shouldn't need to be lucky to learn. And he's absolutely right. When we think about these guys, people say, oh, you know what, they were lucky. They were in the right place at the right time. So I put it to you, today's classrooms are absolutely the right place, and this is the right time. Thank you.